Hey, Sam, how are you? Good. How you doing? Who's this? Where are you calling from? Uh, oh, shit. Um, this is Casey from Tennessee. Casey from Tennessee. What's on your mind? Hey, man. Um, I saw you talking about the uh, Huckabee Sanders with the um, education. Yeah. So I don't know if you've been following uh, Tennessee politics as of late, but Governor Bill Lee really been harping on the uh, Hillsdale private schools, uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. Interesting. And Hillsdale College? Yeah. Um, um, there was a gentleman by the name of, uh, he's a pastor, and I found the video on Twitter. And he was doing a town hall conference, and some guy called him out for it, and he didn't speak. He also did not debate Dr. Jason Martin, uh, the Democrat who was running against him for his gubernatorial seat. He's been governor for the past four years now, and I've been really looking into like his policies. Uh, we just admitted right to work laws within our constitution, which you know drains the union funds and things of that nature. Really terrible labor law, in my opinion. You know, started with this guy named uh, Vance Muse down in Texas, some old billionaire who thought unionization and labor organizing was, you know, communist. Yeah, well, that's a big problem throughout the South. Um, uh, I, you know, I, the, the thing is, states like that, I, I don't get the, um, uh, the, the, the attention, I think, that it normally would on some level, because it just sort of seems like a, a, th these are states that are just like, uh, blood red and um, uh, hostile to labor, well, and, but but I mean obviously yeah. they, they they shouldn't be. But uh, Hillsdale College, I can tell you that I everything I know about Hillsdale College from from listening to Mark Levin, they have been a sponsor of his for at least a decade or two, and it's and, it, and it's really just a way. And, Thomas. and and Ginny Thomas, Thomas works uh, was associated with them too. I think that's a big slush fund for for right wing money. To be honest with you. Uh, I'm not exactly yeah. sure how it flows uh, in and out of there, but it sure feels like that. And he's big on the, uh, he ran big, if I'm not mistaken, on the uh, CRT. We also made it a classy felony, I believe, to sleep on uh, state property, criminalizing homelessness. Because uh, during the uh, BLM stuff back in 2020, they did like a sleep in or a sit in for like 60 days. And Instead of Governor Billy going out and talking to people, Tennessee's also known for the private prison industry. It started in uh, West Tennessee in 82. Things called the ACC, mm -hmm. the American Correctional Co uh, Corporation. Uh, you know, 82 was like the war on drugs, crack right. epidemic, and things of like that. But uh, what I've noticed down here, like with Tennessee being the buckle of the Bible Belt, we really vote on culture cultural signifiers and all that. And, you know, like down here, it's all like pull yourself up by your bootstraps and government can't help you, which I've always personally found truly absurd. Well, it, it's absurd. If you just look at the numbers, you know, you, you have a, um, uh, broadly speaking, um, Southern states uh, get back from the federal government just sheer dollars more than they put in. But, uh, you know, so much of our politics today um, is a function of a f Christian fundamentalism that either is, the, you know, sort of like rooted in actually, you know, in actual religious values or at least in like, you know, a, a cultural ID. I mean, when we talk about like identity politics. There is no more identity politics uh, there is no, there is one party that is completely driven by identity politics, and it is the Republican, Republican. Party. It is driven by Amen, white brother. identity and by uh, self-identified uh, Christians, uh, evangelical Christians. I mean, there's just there's two cohorts, and one is a subset of the other cohort, and that's it. I mean, they they're, they and, and their cultural values dictate who they're going to vote for. I mean, it's, it, it is, you know, when we hear the words identity politics, that's the identity politics that's going on here. It's not even driven necessarily by policy. It can wax and wane completely as a function of what they are told by their leaders is it. I mean, at one point it was the deficit that's gone away. At one point it was 
you know, the debt. They don't even talk about that anymore. Uh, it ends up See, being. I was, born in, uh, I was born in 03, so I'm 19. So I've grown up post 9 11. And what I've noticed, like, I used to be like a conservative, you know, I identify, I used to be like a suburban conservative. That's mm. what I call it, you know? And how would you define like that? Be a, be, I used to be like a big Trumpy. Then I looked into it and I was just like, you know, I, there was a guy by the name of Bo of the Fifth Column. Yeah. yeah. He's a YouTuber. And I found this channel and that completely changed my trajectory. Some oh. more news along with you guys. And that completely like took away the veil to see through the BS essentially. Mm. Yeah. I imagine and, that, 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 uh, that your experience with the uh, bow of the fifth column is, is it happens a lot because he's got all of the, uh, the sort of cultural signifiers that, you know, I think uh, folks from the South are, 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 are comfortable with. I think he's in like his workshop and uh, when he does his videos and he's got a Southern accent and I would imagine uh, there isn't, you know, the barriers for you to hear what he's got to say are not quite as high as they would be, you know, uh, for me, uh, dressing in my Zig, Siegfried and Roy shirt. Uh, <laughs> but um, he's also a veteran, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. He's no. Not. Uh, he ha he's friends with tons of veterans. And he released a great video uh, a couple weeks back about Herschel Walker, about how, like, he was asked a question about, like, how do you feel about youngsters when they disrespect the flag? And he's like, no one's ever died for the flag. They shouldn't have that opinion. And Bo said, that made me angry because nobody's ever died for the flag. You die for your friends. Mm. And that one really stuck with me about, you know, dying for your friends. And, you know, in terms of military, one of my favorite veterans to read about and learn about is uh, Smedley Butler. Yes. The highest Marine and the war is a racket. And if I feel like he didn't die in the early thirties, like what would he think about the atomic bomb or, interventions in South America, Korea and Chile and hell, I wonder if he lived long enough. Like what would he think about Vietnam? Right. I think you're, you're and, onto it. Yeah. Color, you, color. Have you uh, checked out that Jonathan Katz book on Smedley gangs, Butler? Gangsters of capitalism. Um, I would love to, but right now I'm reading a book. I haven't picked it up in a minute, but it's called native son. And it talks about like white liberalism and, you know, uh, things of that nature in the thirties in Chicago. And it's truly like one of not the best books I've read so far. And I've read, uh, mm. some Steinbeck stuff like ghost, um, sorry, grapes of wrath. And that book left a huge imprint on me along with uh, East of Eden. Interesting. Right those two books. Those well, good two for books you, man. The, uh, you're, you're, sure. you're really, um, you had it where you, I was at 19. Yeah, you're. <laughs> yeah. Well, good, good, good for you, man. Keep it up. 